Welcome to another episode of PeaceBag TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can add some interactivity to Slider Revolution 5 and how we can make our slides go to full screen and switch back to the normal view. So this is great if you want to work with a gallery type situation or many other different reasons. So I'm going to take you step by step through the entire process and show you exactly how easy it is to add this interactivity to your slides. So I created my slider and as you can see I've got one image set up on there as the background and if we scroll down that's all you can see that's all I've got available to me at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting the interactive elements in there and then we're going to apply the controls to those to allow us to switch this effect on and off. So if I just come down to my preview window if I come to the add layer option the first thing I'm going to do is add a new button. I'm just going to choose one of the preset button layouts. So I'm not going to worry about changing color and so on. I'm just going to use this as an example. So we'll click on that. We'll position that first button where I want in the bottom right hand corner. And we'll do the same again. So we'll come to add layer. We'll add another button. Choose the same style. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just drag that down and position that to the right hand side of the first one. So let's start off by renaming these now so they have more sense. So let's click the first one. Select that. And if I just double click, that'll open up the window and allow you to change the different parameters. We can change the title in there. If we wanted to change the icon that's being used, we can do all that right here. So all I'm going to do this is say set full screen. And we'll check that to confirm. And we'll do the same for the next one. We'll just double click and we'll just say close full screen. And check to confirm. I'll just reposition those now so they sit with the extra spacing on there. So I'll just go back now and select the first button and scroll up the screen above the preview and make sure that we've got the Actions tab selected. And as you can see at the moment, that's completely blank. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus to add our first action and we're going to tell it what we want it to do. Now this is applying only to the currently active element. In this example, that's going to be the set full screen button. So when that's clicked, we want to do something. So at the moment, we've got disabled. So if I choose the drop down list, you can see we've got a whole range of different actions that we can apply to this. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on go full screen. I'm not going to worry about display, uh, a delay, that's fine. So we just come down now, choose the second button, scroll back up. You can see the action is gone because we're now applying this to a completely different element on our display. So we'll do the same thing again. We'll click on plus. Click is the option we want, that's the action the user needs to take. We'll click from disabled and we'll come down to say exit full screen. Now, if I save that, we've got our actions applied to each one of these buttons. So if I come to my demonstration page and I'll just refresh that a moment. So there's our buttons. They need to be repositioned a little bit better, but they're on there. So if I click on set full screen, we now go to full screen slider. And if I resize my window, you can see this is fully responsive so if we use a larger or smaller screen display this is going to work exactly as we wanted to and if i click on close full screen that will close it and go back to the previous view so we've added that interactivity this is great if you're working with slideshows you can easily create that set full screen and close your full screen down so people can have the choice to flip between either version this is great if you're dealing with a, a gallery type situation as opposed to using it as a main slider on your page and I'm sure you can find many other reasons why you'd find this useful. So this is just one of the many things that you can do by adding interactivity to your slides. Now we'll take a look at more of those functions in further videos and we'll take different examples and we'll take a look at how we can stack those on top of each other to create a string of actions that'll do various different things. But I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post and try to answer as many questions as possible. Until next time, take care.